part two acceleration analysis example. Now we got here two equations, four unknowns. I can't do it, but we need some more. So here we're going to look at a velocity analysis now. We're going to do the velocity analysis of this problem. And usually when you do an acceleration analysis, doing the velocity analysis comes hand in hand because the velocity analysis typically gives you omega b a. Okay, this uh, the angular velocity of the rigid body, and that helps you solve the the acceleration problem or the relative acceleration equation. So in this problem here, we're going to do the velocity analysis using the instantaneous using uh, instantaneous center of rotation or center of zero velocity or blah 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 uh, method. Okay, right here. And so let me redraw here the rigid body. The rigid body here is. Let's see, we've got a rod about two feet long. Here's two points. And I've got a velocity here, horizontal VB, um, equal to five feet per second. And is that correct? Five feet, feet per second? Yes, five feet per second. And I have here, I know that this point A... This is point A, here is point B, point A. This point A is moving on a circular path. And so it's either, you know, up or down, but I'm sh it's, it's moving on this line somewhere. And my gut instinct says, which we're going to confirm, that the velocity is down this way, okay? And, you know, if, if this is going this way to the right, obviously this point A should be going downwards, okay? But we're going to also prove that. So here is VA, which is downwards, right here. And this is VB. And to find the instantaneous center of rotation, we look at the velocity vectors. We draw a line perpendicular to each velocity vector. Bam! There's one line. And then we draw another perpendicular to it. And that is... Ka-ching! Here, the instantaneous center of rotation. That means everything is moving about this point at that instant. And this angle right here is 30 degrees. And so let's see here. If I apply, uh, you know, if I apply, so here uh, uh, I have to find the, the relationship. And if you recall, so here, obviously, if, if B is moving towards the right about this instantaneous center of rotation, so that means this is right here, the, the direction of my angular velocity, or omega b a, okay? All right, this omega b a. And the relationship here for instantaneous center of rotation is that this omega b a is v b divided by the distance to b from the instantaneous center of rotation, which is also equal to any other point, the velocity at any other point divided by the distance to any other point from the instantaneous center of rotation at that instant. So right here, we're going to get, you know, once we figure out what this distance is right here, we're done, right? We're going to get that, that, that angular velocity. So this is also 30 degrees because, okay. And so here, this uh, uh, omega B, let's calculate this, ome ooh, this, uh, this, this distance right here, RBI, and this is RAI, this distance, so RBI is just equal to uh, this this the rigid body was two feet right here so it'd be two feet and that would be sine of 30 degrees which is a half and that would be one foot okay that's one foot and then r a i is two feet cosine of 30 degrees which is this is square root of 3 over 2, so this is square root of 3, which is 1.732 feet. Okay, these are feet, feet notation right there. Okay, so that's good. And that means that the angular velocity, omega b, is equal to the velocity of b, 5 feet per second, divided by 1 foot, which is 5 radians per second. All right, sweet. And then the velocity of a is equal to, and oh, here we have this, uh, what is this direction? This is, bam, like that. This uh, uh, counterclockwise deal is confirmed also because it's positive. We know it's counterclockwise. And VA is omega, oops, let's put that, omega BA times RAI, 
RAI, which would be 5 radians per second times 1.732. And in my calculator, that says 8.66 feet per second. And this direction is correct because if I'm rotating about this instantaneous center and I'm going this way, then point A has to go down. So yes, so if I put the little vector symbol because I know the direction of magnitude. And what's more is that here, I assumed omega be A as count or is counterclockwise, and I've confirmed that it's counterclockwise, so I'm okay. I can keep omega be A positive, if you will, when I go back and plug into these equations. Or omega, this is the same as omega A B. Okay, this is also omega A B. All right, all right, and so we have that, and also we found we found the velocities, and now we have essentially gotten rid of an unknown. Bam, right here. So one unknown done. So we've got three unknowns left and two equations. So we still have to get rid of another unknown. And you know that this velocity here is useful because recall we said that this point A moves in a circular path right here. So let me let me draw that over here. So if I have point A here, looking just focusing on point A moving in a circular path right here and we know that the velocity of point a right here is 8.66 feet per second downward we can calculate the normal component of acceleration n which is to the right here as va squared over rho the radius of curvature of the path and in this case, this would be 8.66 feet per second, quantity squared, divided by rho, which was 1.5 feet, 1.5 feet, okay, 1.5 feet, and that comes out to 8.66 squared divided by 1.5 is 50 feet per second squared, and that is another unknown, let's go. And I, but I still don't know what I, you know, AAT. I don't know what AAT is. Okay, but you know, I, I have a strong sense that it's downwards. I just don't know its magnitude, and and that's what I have left to figure out. I have, if I go back here now, I can say yes, I know omega AB, and I know AAN, which leaves me with AAT and alpha, the angular acceleration, as my only two unknowns, and now I have two unknowns and two equations and now i can solve it all right and so in the last part i will solve it and then oh and i will give you the uh you know we'll talk about making sure that we get the direction and magnitude of this final acceleration vector so i'm going to solve these two equations to unknowns in the next video all right see you there